dog treats taste pretty good, actually. I'm tempted to eat that. Okay. So how do you do Portugal cheap? You know, there's a lot of videos out there that say Portugal is really cheap, and it's really not. So is it still a good place to go visit as a nomad and live there long term? Well, that's what I want to find out. And I'm going to do it the cheap way, though. Apparently in Lisbon, you're looking at rent at around $250 a night. So no, it's not cheap. However, there is two other ways to do it that's much cheaper. And I'm going to try that in this video. Well, I'm going to talk about that, what I'm planning to do, and where I plan to go while I'm in Lisbon, how I'm going to do it cheap. I'm going to do it for under $1,500 a month. Here's how it'll all go down. Stop one is Ericeira. Ericeira is a dream for surfers. This place is actually the first world surfing reserve in Europe. Imagine waking up to the sound of waves crashing and hitting the surf at spots like Ribera de Lis and Foz do Lisandro. The waves are consistent and there's something for every skill level. I booked a decent camper van for a month from IndieCampers.com. In October and November, it's only $17 a night. I'll pick it up in Lisbon. I left a link in the description if you want to check it out yourself. The hostels are around $25 to $35 a night. I am a huge fan of hostels because you meet a ridiculous amount of people. But for this trip, I am doing the camper. I always wanted to try the surf and camp by the beach lifestyle. So I think this would be a good time to try it. It seems like a lot of fun. I love the freedom of it. And we'll be able to see the best of Portugal with ease. I plan to park my camper at Camping Ericeira or Orbitor Camping. Both spots are well equipped and close to the action. There are plenty of wild free places to camp too. When I'm not surfing, I'll explore the charming town with its cobbled streets and enjoy some fresh seafood. Stop two. Penicia. Next, I'll drive 60 kilometers up the coast to Penicia. This place is famous for Super Tubos Beach, where the waves are powerful and perfect for some thrilling rides. It's a hot spot for pro surfers. So I'll definitely be soaking up some tips and maybe even catching a competition. I'll stay at Peniche Praia camping and bungalows, which is right by the beach. Besides surfing, I'll check out the stunning cliffs and the laid back town vibe. Stop three, Nazare. From Peniche, it's another 60 kilometers to Nazare. Now Nazare is legendary in the surfing world because of its gigantic waves. I'm talking record-breaking heights here. Even if I don't brave those massive waves, just watching them will be awe-inspiring. I'll stay at Vale Paraiso Natur Park, which offers a great blend of comfort and nature. When I'm not at the beach, I might visit the local lighthouse for some epic views. After Nazare, I'll drive 80 kilometers to Figueira de Foz. This place has a mix of reliable waves and vibrant nightlife. Cabadello Beach is the go-to spot for surfing, with vast sandy stretches that are perfect for chilling out after a session in the water. I'll set up camp at Orbiter Gala, a well-situated and affordable campsite. When I'm not surfing, I'll explore the local bars and cafes to soak up the atmosphere. Stop five, Porto. Finally, I'll head 120 kilometers to Porto. Porto isn't just about surfing, but also offers rich culture and stunning architecture. I'll be hitting up nearby beaches like Matosinhos for some surf sessions, staying at Orbitur Angeras, close to the beach, will give me the perfect spot to relax after exploring the city. I can't wait to wander through Porto's historic streets, enjoy some wine tasting, and maybe take a boat trip on the Douro River. Budget breakdown. I'll keep my budget tight by staying at affordable campsites, cooking my own meals, and shopping at local markets. Here's a rough breakdown. Accommodation. I'll always look for wild, free, stealth camping spots first. If that fails, then then $10 to $20 per night for camper sites. Groceries, $200 to $300 per month. Fuel, $150 to $200. Activities, like surfing gear rentals, $300 to $400. Miscellaneous, like internet, laundry, 
etc. $100. Okay, back to my last few bucket list spots. Stop. 6. Aveiro from Porto. I'll travel about 70 kilometers south to Aveiro, often called the Venice of Portugal, due to its picturesque canals and colorful boats. Though not a surfing hotspot, it's a great place to relax and enjoy the unique atmosphere. I'll take a boat tour on the canals and try the local delicacy, Ovos Moles, a sweet treat. Stop 7, Coimbra. Next, I'll drive 60 kilometers to Coimbra, home to one of the oldest universities in Europe. The city is full of history and charm with its narrow streets and ancient buildings. I'll explore the university, visit the Joanina Library, and enjoy some live photo music in the old town. Stop. 8. Algarve. Heading south, I'll make my way to the Algarve region, about 350 kilometers from Coimbra. This area is renowned for its stunning beaches, cliffs, and clear waters. I'll spend time in towns like Lagos and Albufeira, enjoying the beach, and maybe trying some more surfing at spots like Praia de Rocha. There are plenty of affordable camping sites in the area, perfect for my budget. Stop 9. Sintra. Finally, on my way back towards Lisbon, I'll stop in Sintra, just 30 kilometers from the capital. Sintra is known for its fairy tale palaces and lush landscapes. I'll visit the Pena Palace, the Moorish Castle, and wander through the mystical gardens of Quinta da Regaleira. It's the perfect place to wrap up my adventure with some breathtaking sights. Tips for the road. Traveling off season in October and November will help save money and avoid crowds. Cooking my meals in the camper van or using campsite facilities and free wild camper sites will keep food costs down. I'll hit up local markets for fresh produce and connect with surfing communities for tips and possibly free stealth camping spots. Wild camping is also on the list where it's allowed and safe. This trip is going to be an unforgettable adventure, combining my love for surfing, nature, and exploring new places. With a bit of planning and a spirit of adventure, I'm confident I'll make the most out of every dollar. Can't wait to share all the stories when I get back. Let me know if you have any suggestions of where I should go while in Portugal. I would love to hear about local secret spots. I have two free guides to make your next travel adventure epic. One tells you how to earn online as a digital nomad. If you want to earn income while you travel, just like I do, then download your free copy in the description. It's called 54 Side Hustles, Tested Dossier. Okay, happy travels and see you in the next video.